today we're going to be talking about masks and how to get them working in game the thing to understand about masks first off is masks actually use a special assigned slot they don't use like the uh, standard main torso or uh, Skyrim head or anything like that. They actually use a special uh, BS dismember skin modifier uh, and they also need to be standalone craftable armor. It's not something that you can just uh, replace over something else in game and get it working. Well there is a way to do it but uh, I've set up a file uh, to make a standalone mask and uh, this, uh, you just to get the file, it's important. You have to get this for this tutorial. Without it, uh, this tutorial would not work for you. So you need to go to the Creating Custom Armor Step by Step by Nidacy, uh work in progress uh, by me, uh, to uh, my webpage on the Skyrim Nexus. It's at skyrim.nexusmods.com, mods192.49. Or you can just go to the Skyrim Nexus and search Nidacy. Once you get there, you want to go over here and you want to go to Files and download the Mass Tutorial Video Resource. Okay, it's just a very tiny file that contains a pre-set uh, up uh, craftable mask. It'll be located in the hide section of the game. It has an ESP. So go ahead and download this with the manager or download it manually and drop everything into your Skyrim destination. It's just like installing any mod and make sure you activate the ESP before moving forward. And uh, this will make us a craftable mask slot and we're actually going to replace it with your own mask. Uh, don't worry, in the future I am going to show you how to do this in the creation kit, how to make standalone armor uh, once we finish the helmet. So it'll be the tutorial possibly after, just after we do this, we're going to do helmets, and then we're going to do craftable standalone armor in the creation kit. And then we're moving on to probably textures and UV mapping uh, advanced. So uh, go here, get this file, and as soon as you have this installed, uh, go ahead and open up your 3DS Max. And once you get your 3DS Max open, go to the 3DS symbol, go to import, and you want to go to your... Uh, uh, mine's on my desktop. Go to your data folder, your data shortcut to get you into your Skyrim, the one we created earlier. Just go to your data shortcut, uh, go into meshes. You'll see a folder called CA4S Tutorials. Double click that, double click mask, and select mask backup. Okay, we're never going to save over this. This will always be available to you. So if you screw up during the tutorial, you can always go back and get this. All right, and then select open and you're going to want to select import skeleton all right and select import now you'll see this is the basic ga uh, gag that uh, Ulfric uh, Stormcloak uh, leader whatever he he's wearing it in the beginning whenever you're riding on it this is actually now a standalone mask uh, that I put together really fast only took me a couple seconds but I've assigned it to a special slot now the first thing I want you to take note of some of you may notice that in body part it's blank but it does have a BS dismember applied. You'll notice my polygon uh, facing is set up and everything's selected. So this is actually assigned to something, but NIFScope does not have this perimeter set uh, in its setup. So I had to actually get this, and that's why you need this folder, is because we're going to copy this BS dismember skin modifier from this onto your mask. All right. Uh, so you definitely want to get this. That's very important. So now with this mask, uh, we don't really need this mask. You're just going to be crafting your own mask. All right. And the thing, uh, another thing to be uh, weary of, the thing to be weary of, is that masks do not fit any face. All right. Unfortunately, masks do not have a weight slider. That's a good thing because most of us hate doing weight sliders. But it's also a bad thing because it's basically one size fits all. So people have to fit their face to fit the mask. So it's usually best if you make a mask that covers the lower half of the face or if you create a mask that covers more than the lower half of the face. Uh, you usually want your mask to kind of go into the face a little bit so kind of make it wide. Um, Masks are very tricky business. That's why not too many people make them, uh, because you know, like I said, it's one size fits all. So make sure you diselect this face because we don't want to screw this up yet. And we're just going to right-click on this mask and we're going to go ahead and hide it. Now, real quick, uh, we're going to go up here. We're going to go to 3ds. We're going to select import, and we're going to import a head so we can have something to mold our mask around. So we're going to go to Skyrim Mesh. So find your Skyrim Mesh. Go to Meshes, uh, Actors. 
character. Um, and it should be character assets. Yes, character assets. Then you got to scroll down and you got to find female head. Now, if you're making a male, you're going to have to choose the male head. So, female head. And I'm going to select open. I'm going to go ahead and not import the skeleton because I already have one and select import. Now we have the female head in 3ds Max to form our mask around. Uh, so go ahead and create your mask. I'll pause the video here for a second and uh, when I come back I'll have a mask developed around my character's face. Okay, so as you can see I have my mask developed. I just created a you know, box with a whole bunch of vertices and move stuff around. Uh, very simple stuff to make a mask. Uh, now you'll notice, uh, let's take a look here at my mask so I can show you a couple things. If I go up here to realistic and I go to um, sh I guess uh, I could use wireframe to show you. And I zoom in here. It's kind of hard to see. Hopefully you can make it out. You'll see that I've fitted around slightly in front of the face. Uh, the default face uh, but it's kind of close so if I go back to um, realistic again it's just really really close but it's kind of thick too to provide some leeway for different variations of faces you know so I've it's out a little bit that's okay if it's out a little bit it doesn't have to be dead on the face it just allows for some variations again people would have to fit their face to this mask so I kind of made it as best I could to be universal. If you kind of look at it, it kind of looks like a skull head with some fangs. This is on the uh, armor mod that I recently released, this mask is, uh, which looks really cool when it's painted. It doesn't look that great right now, but it's a pretty cool mask. Anyways, uh, now we need to skin wrap it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I need to import something to skin wrap. If you skin wrap to the head, you're a lot of times you'll run into problems if you skin wrap directly to the head. So I never skin wrap to a head when I'm making a mask. I always skin wrap to a circlet. So you go to import. And we're going to go find us a circlet. So we go to Skyrim Mesh. Uh, then we're going to go to Meshes. You're going to go into Armor. That's right. And circlets. And in here we need to find a circlet. This is a ground item, so we don't want that circlet. So you need to go down to circlet F1. That's a female circlet. Now if you're making a male character, you would import the circlet M1 if you're making a mask for a male. So I just do circlet female 1, select open. I uh, don't need a skeleton, already have one, and import it. Now this already has some skin detail. I don't need these gems up front, so I'm just going to delete those. I just need this part that's going around the skull. So I'm just going to skin wrap to this uh, instead of the head. So I select my mask. I'll throw a smooth on it and set it to a 2. And then I'll do my skin wrap. She already know how to do this. Skin wrap. Uh, set it to face deformation, weight all points. Make sure you have weight all points set. And select add and then click the mask or the circlet. And you'll see it'll say something like F10. That's the name of the circlet. And as soon as that's done, you go ahead and convert that to a skin. Go up here and delete your skin wrap modifier. Now we're done with the circlet. We can delete it. We're also done with the head, so we can delete it. Uh, the head was just something so we could shape around it. Now we need our uh, BS dismember that we imported from our mask. So we're going to right click and we're going to say unhide all. And we're going to select our mask. Go up here, right click on BS dismember with the mask selected and copy it. Then go to your mask, select your mask with skin selected. We're going to right click and we're going to say paste. Now we need to, with the BS dismember, uh, select faces. Do not click the body part. Just select, click on this little face, zoom out and select your whole mask, and then deselect the face. Now this BS dismember is set up for this mask. That's done, so we no longer need our mask. We can delete that. Now we're ready to export this and test it in-game. So in order to get this in-game, we're going to have to import it over our original mask that's craftable from the resource folder that you installed. So we're going to go in here to 3DS Symbol. We're going to export this, and we got to go to our uh, Skyrim data folder. Cause, so go to your desktop and find your data shortcut. Go into your Skyrim engine, this is, this is in here, and then you're going to go to Meshes, and you're going to find CA4S Tutorials, double click Mask, and select Mask. Okay, remember we're not saving over Mask Backup, that's in case we need it again. So save over Mask and click Save. You want to replace it? Yes. 
make sure you remove the weld vertices and select export. It'll export very fast because masks are usually really low uh, information wise. All right, now we're ready to test out a game. So make sure you get in there and uh, you don't have to transfer this over from one file to another. You just leave it in its own NIF and fix your, you know, your BS lighting uh, shader property. Just take one from, I don't know, another file. You could pull the BS, uh, you could pull the BS lighting shader property off of a circlet and put it on here. So it doesn't really matter which one you pick. Just pick a some helm and copy its BS lighting shader property and put it on this. Doesn't even have to be from a helm. You could copy it from any of the armor ones and just put that BS lighting shader property onto this mask. Now again, if you were using a male, all you'd do is when you skin wrapped it, you'd skin wrap it, wrap it to a male circlet and then do the same thing. Unhide that uh, mask and paste uh, that copy paste that BS lighting shader property onto this and then put the polygons on it. Alright, so let's see this in game. I just wanted to test tack this on here real quick. Uh, to find that mask that you just exported, you could go to data. Uh, it's in meshes, CA4S tutorials, mask. And there's your, you know, you double click that and then you can fix your uh, you know, your textures in NIF scope just by opening this up, going in here and deleting this and then copying one from another working NIF over into this and assigning it like you would normally and then setting up your new textures to it. So, alright, see you guys here in a second. Alright, so now here I am in game. Well, first thing we need to do is we need to get somewhere where we can craft that armor. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit our tilt key and we're going to type COC Studio 1 and it's going to be really, or sorry, COC QA Smoke and hit enter. Alright, now once I'm in here what I want to do is I want to go ahead and get my mask crafted. So I'm going to hit my uh, tilt key because I need a leather strip and uh, we're going to say player dot add item and I think it's uh, 80034 is a leather strip space and just hit one on your keyboard and press enter. Um, okay that's not it so I'll type in help uh, strip. Oh, wait there it is. Miscellaneous leather strips. So then I'll hit uh, player dot add item 800E4 space 1. Huh, I thought I did it right. I must have mistyped it. Alright, so now I have a leather strip. I'll run over here to my forge. Sorry for it being so dark. Nothing I can do about that. And then hide. You should be able to scroll down and you're going to see uh, mask. Alright, it's going to look like a piece of ebony armor. I didn't set that up, so it's whatever. And then just craft it. And once it's added, We'll just type in COC Studio 1 for better lighting and hit enter. All right, now here we are. Now we're ready to equip it, so I'll hit my inventory. I'll find my mask. Oop, that's the wrong one. And there it is. There is our mask in game, uh, all set up and uh, wearable, so I can run around uh, and test it out. Everything should be fine there, so now you have a working mask in game. Alright, so your mask should be showing up in game, so now you have your mask, uh, and this armor is almost complete, we just need a helmet now. Actually, my armor, I didn't put a helmet on it when I released it to the Nexus, so if you don't like making helmets, I don't really like making helmets because I like to see my character's hair, it's just me. But uh, now I have this really grotesque looking mask, you know, that kind of has some specular to it, um, with some added details. But anyways. That's all there is to it. So once you get in game, you just you know go over to a crafting forge, craft the mask, and equip it. And again, I'll be showing you how to set it up with your own name and all that whenever we get into making the armor standalone. This is just for testing purposes, all right? So you're just making your mask, saving it over the mask tutorial resource for testing purposes only. And uh, I'll see you guys for the next tutorial, and we'll talk about helmets.